my name is Nazir Khan from the Faculty of Civil Engineering Technology and I will be demonstrating for you the construction of the shear force diagram and the bending moment diagram in statics and strength of material. Please have fun with this presentation. When we look at what we have here is a simple beam and you might ask yourself why do we need to construct shear and bending moment diagram? It's for design purposes. It is for the sizing of beams when we have uh, maximum shear force and maximum bending moment we could then choose different types and orientation of beam different material types and different sizes of beam that will accommodate the load so we have to examine the moment within the beam and the shear force within the beam so that's the purpose of what we're doing when we look at this simple diagram here we have on the left hand side here we have what we call a pin or hinge support. We ha then have a UDL. We have a point load. And then we have a roller support. UDL means uniformly distributed load. With the supports that we have here, they could be a representation of walls or so. And you notice the symbols for these supports are different. The symbols are different. This one is called a pin or hinge, and it is uh, represented by a horizontal and vertical reactant force horizontal and vertical reactant force we'll see that right away for the right hand side the roller support this is unique uh, in its nature the roller support is represented by one force one reactant force perpendicular to the base of it so if this was oriented in the vertical direction where the roller was over here you would have uh, a force acting that way so it's uh, perpendicular to the base of it the first thing that I have to do is place some guidelines here because we're gonna have a, a stack of diagrams each the next diagram is dependent on the previous diagram say for instance if I didn't have a, a beam diagram I couldn't construct a, construct a free body diagram which you'll see right away okay we put a guideline at each location where you have a change of loading a change of loading we have right at this left hand side we have the end of the beam and usually you put a a guideline at that location we also have a reactant force or two reactant force right there so we're going to place a guideline the end of the uniformly distributed load I'm going to put a guideline and the point load guideline and on the right hand side where we have the reactant force for BY we're going to have a guideline there. These guidelines are here because we're going to place a stack of diagrams. Stack of them. First one that, that's going to happen is a free body diagram. And if we didn't have, again, the simple beam uh, here, we couldn't construct a free body diagram. So the next diagram is dependent on the previous diagram. And after the free body diagram, we're going to do a deflected shape, and we're going to do a little bit of an explanation there. We're going to do a load diagram. We're going to do shear force diagram, and then finally a bending moment diagram. And the shear force diagram, the maximum deviation, we're going to pick that number of, and same with the bending moment diagram. So let's go and create our FBD. Free body diagram means that you have cut a part of a structure away from the original structure and you have replaced the supports with forces. In this case, the supports are a pin support and a roller support. Pin support is associated with two forces, one horizontal, one vertical. Roller support, in this case, it is one vertical force, BY. With the requirements of an FBD, you're drawing it with a straight edge you have to have all of the loading involved if you don't have magnitudes you're gonna label them you're gonna have dimension well I'm not gonna repeat the dimensions because they're right up here and that's one of the reasons for stacking the the diagrams too you don't have to repeat certain types of information they're right there okay so I have my dimensions in here I have all of my magnitudes that I need if you notice for AX, which is this reactant force right there, I already have a magnitude of zero. The reason for this is that we don't have any horizontal component to cause a reaction, to cause a reaction from this particular support. Okay? If we had an angular force, 
then the component would cause a reaction. We would have a magnitude other than zero for this. Okay. The next thing to do is to go and calculate the mag magnitude of AY and BY. We have to calculate the magnitude of AY and BY. To do that, we have three equilibrium equations available to us. And those equations are summation forces in the x direction is equal to zero, summation forces in the y direction is equal to zero, and summation moments is equal to zero. Let's go and look at the calculation for AY and BY. Okay. I have placed on the simple beam, I've placed a point load representing the UDL or the uniformly distributed load. We know that every meter that we go, out, go over or on the base of it, on the width of it, every meter is going to be 7 kilonewtons. So we have 2 meters here. 7 times 2 is 14. I'm going to put it through the centroid of that particular UDL. Okay. It will help me with my calculation. It is not part of the FBD. It just help me with my calculation. I'm going to do moments about point A. It will eliminate the most amount of unknown force at that point. And I'm going to have a moment that's created by the UDL. I'm going to have a moment that's created by the point force. And I'm going to have a moment that is created by the reactant at B. Okay, so we're going to have three moments. We're going to have three sets of terms. Terms are separated by minus and plus signs. So we're going to have three sets. The equation is summation moments about point A is equal to zero and counterclockwise rotation is considered to be positive. That's what the other is telling us. Okay, let's go and create the magnitude. Remember that the mo uh, a moment is force times perpendicular distance, right? So we have the magnitude of the force right there, seven times two, which is 14, times the perpendicular distance. Well, that perpendicular distance happened to be true the centroid of that shape. So that will be 2 divided by 2, which will give you 1. We can't remember, we can't forget, I should say, that the rotation is negative. This is going to create a negative rotation about point A. So therefore, we have a minus right in front here. When we look at the point load right here, the point load right here, again, we have a negative rotation. It's going clockwise. It's going clockwise. And we have a perpendicular distance to that line of action. That line of action is 3 plus or 2 plus 3, which will give you 5. So minus 12 times 5 will give you minus 60. We also have a moment that's going to be created by BY here. It's going to go that direction. And that particular moment has a perpendicular distance of 2, 5, 9. So 9 times BY in the positive direction. When you crunch those numbers, you're going to have 8.222 kilonewton as your reactant force. Okay, it's 8.222. I have carried an extra digit here because my final answer, I round off to three sig figs. The intermediate answers, I just keep a guard digit so that I have accurate answers. Okay, this force, when I write a force, I have the magnitude, we have all four co components of a force, magnitude, the direction is vertical, the sense is up, and point of application is point B. So we have magnitude, direction, sense, point of application. Okay, let's go and calculate the force for AY now. I cannot reuse my equilibrium equation for one scenario. Okay, I cannot reuse the equilibrium. I've done summation moments. I cannot use summation moments about point B and solve for AY. I have to choose one of the other two equilibrium equation. And the appropriate equation to choose is summation forces in the Y direction is equal to zero. And of course, we have going up is positive. Okay, going up is positive. When we look at uh, forces going up, we have AY going up, that's a positive. We have the 14 kilonewton going down, which is a negative, and we have 12 kilonewton going down, a negative again, and we have 
a value, a magnitude for by now, and that's going up. Positive. Crunch the numbers, you have 1778 kilonewtons acting up. So now we have all of our magnitudes that we need for FBD. Okay. Again, my final answer, I'll run off the three significant digits. The other answers, I'm going to carry a guard digit. Let's go and construct a deflected shape diagram now. Okay. The deflected shape diagram is constructed from the beam diagram. It is the red line here showing the way that the beam would actually deflect under the loading under loading okay it's a bit exaggerated for demonstration purposes but it is the way that the beam the shape that the beam would actually take on the loading so this is it right there we have a beam that's pinned at two location and it has forces acting down in between those two locations it will cause this type of shape on the upper part I have a C and the lower part I have a T the C represent compression, the T represent tension. Now let's consider a wooden beam. Okay, If I were to take one fiber on the upper half of the wooden beam, on the upper half of the wooden beam, a fiber right there, for it to assume the shape what has to happen to that fiber, it has to be compressed. It has to be compressed. So the forces must be acting towards the member. The member is being the fiber now. And when you look at the lower half of the beam, the lower half of the beam, the fiber has to be stretched. So the force it has to be acting away. It has to pull it apart to stretch it. And any time that we have forces acting towards a member, it is compression. And force acting away from the member, it's tension. Okay, so that's how we decide which side is tension and compression. Also, the dotted line could be considered the neutral axis which you don't have any tension or compression there that's a separating line between tension and compression okay so you could consider it the neutral axis in that respect so we have um, a deflected shape one other thing about the deflected shape the internal moment in the beam always act if you were to put a moment it's more like a, a torque it's a rotation you would put the arrowhead towards compression it depends on where you cut the beam okay the open end is where the the moment will bleed out